The simplest kind of nerve fiber is a long, thin cylinder covered by a membrane, which can be excited electrically. If a strong enough electric current is applied to the membrane, it produces a momentary physical change in the membrane, called the nerve impulse, which travels away from the point of stimulation in both directions. The impulse can be recorded as a wave of electric potential, which is amplified and displayed on an oscilloscope. This curve of electric potential difference across the membrane, plotted against time, is called an action potential. But this curve shows only what happens at a single point on the fiber. An action potential curve plotted against distance along the fiber looks very similar but shows only what is happening at a single instant of time. To see changes in both time and distance, watch the curve. This is an action potential moving along a nerve fiber in slow motion. To describe the impulse in greater detail, we need a second curve. The upper curve is the action potential, or propagated V wave. The lower curve shows the recovery wave, or R wave. Unlike the action potential, the R wave cannot be measured directly, but it plays an essential role in the formation of the nerve impulse. By making the membrane temporarily inexcitable, it ends the impulse. This is how the action potential would look if there were no recovery wave. The membrane potential would stay up instead of returning to its original resting level. This also illustrates the mechanism of propagation. The potential gradient at the front of the V wave provides the current that stimulates the resting membrane just ahead. When two impulses meet, they destroy each other because neither one can pass through the R wave of the other. The R wave is an essential part of the nerve impulse and its physical basis will be mentioned later. At any point on the fiber, the following sequence of events occurs during an impulse. If we now focus our attention on a single point of the fiber which is being stimulated, the stimulating current initiates a V wave which in turn starts an R wave. The R wave brings the V wave to an end and then slowly disappears, leaving the membrane ready for the next stimulus. These are the theoretical equations which were solved with a computer to make this motion picture. V is the membrane potential. R is the recovery variable. S is the stimulating current. The stimulator sends a pulse of current through the membrane. We are interested only in the response of the fiber at the right electrode. Assume that the left one is so far away that it has no effect here. 
A diagram of the stimulus shows a rectangular pulse of current, which is strong enough to produce an impulse. If it is weaker than a certain threshold level, it does not produce an impulse. This stimulus is below threshold. The figure shows the stimulus strength relative to threshold. Watch for the stimulus arrow above the digits. The V wave is too small to grow into an action potential and dies away. Since the V wave is not propagated, it is called a local response. Next, we try a stronger stimulus. This time, the V wave is large enough to initiate the regenerative process of excitation and grow spontaneously into an action potential. The R wave splits the V wave into two action potentials that travel away in opposite directions. Although a single sub-threshold stimulus cannot excite the fiber, two such stimuli at different electrodes can combine to produce an impulse, but only if the electrodes are close enough together. These stimuli are too far apart to excite the fiber. If the electrodes are moved a little closer together, an impulse appears. This is called spatial summation of stimuli. <laughs> 